These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Going to cast a spell today, Eggs? Hopefully. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see, because hoping to get one over on our quiz champions are the Egg Bags from West Yorkshire. Now, this team are all members of Merlin's Magic Club, which meets monthly at a magic shop in Wakefield. Let's meet them. Hello, my name's Bob. I'm a fleet driver and a part-time magician. Hello, my name's Darren, and I'm a magician. Hello, I'm Kim, and I'm an IT advisor. Hello, I'm Phil, and I'm a magician and a magic dealer. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm a magician and magic dealer. So, Bob and team, hello. Hello, hello. hello Great to see you. Thanks so much for coming in. And I should ask why you have the name the Egg Bags. Well, the Egg Bag trick is one of the oldest tricks in magic. Uh, maybe we can show you. Love you too. Uh, first thing we'll need is an egg. Oh, sorry about that, Daz. Uh, I've got a red hanky. <laughs> um, that's not really much use. Um, handkerchief is not much use to anybody. It's not even the right colour. Maybe we could do something about that. If I take the handkerchief, we can change it from a red handkerchief all the way into... Oh, I love a that. white handkerchief. Oh, um, well, Darren, I mean, it's all well and good, but, you know, a handkerchief is not really much use for the, the egg bag trick. What we really need is an egg. <gasps> All right. Uh, so this is the egg bag that we're talking about. So the egg goes in there. Yeah. Uh, and instantly disappears. Oh. So now we've vanished it. We need to make it reappear. But to be honest, Phil, I'm not that keen on eggs. No. But I do like an egg nog. Really? Oh, yes, oh yeah. 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 cheers! Yeah. We've all got one. Yeah. How did you do that? that and you, that's the one thing you can't ask how they do it. I don't know, it's proper magic, Judith. Thank you. Well, so do, oh, I don't even want to ask if you quiz as well as doing magic, because it doesn't really matter, because if you get into trouble here, you just make them disappear. <laughs> Once a year we have a, a magic quiz at Merlin's Magic Shop in Wakefield. It sounds like a fantastic shop. Is it somewhere you go a lot? We, we meet there once a month and um, swap a few ideas, swap a few tricks. We usually have a theme. And it usually ends up with everybody taking the mickey out of Phil. Yeah. That's <laughs> been open for 22 years. I've been yeah. going since I was eight years old. Oh, how brilliant. Every town, every high street needs a magic shop. I do. Doesn't it? Well, good luck, challengers. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs. However, if the challenging team fails to win, that prize money rolls over to the next show. So, egg bags, the egg heads have won the last four games. So... £5,000 is here for you to play for now. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of music. So it's one of you against either Dave, Steve, Beth, Kevin or Judith. Okay, you two. Yeah, I was wondering. Do you think I should? Yeah, you should. Straight into it, Bob, yeah. Captain's going straight in. The captain goes in. That's a big yeah. moment. So against which egghead? Any one of the five? I think I'm going to go for Judith. You're going to be his magical assistant? Yes. Bob from the egg bags versus Judith from the egg heads. Certain symmetry here. Please, for the first time, go to our legendary question room. Bob, how did you first get into the magic? I started uh, quite a while ago. I used to work with kids with behavioural problems, and I found it a very useful tool to uh, distract the kids, and um, it just went from there. I've been doing it ever since. All right, well, let's see what you can do in this round. Music is the subject. You're up against Judith. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. Which of these composers was born first? Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Giuseppe Verdi, or Edward Elgar? Okay, I think Edward Elgar was uh, probably the younger of the three. Verdi and Mozart, I'm going to say that the... The one that was born first was probably Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You are absolutely right. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is correct. And we have Kevin here. So, Kevin, when was Mozart born? 1756. Verdi? 1813. Elgar? 1857. Amazing, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no preparation. He didn't know that was coming. Okay, Judith. Drinking in the morning sun, blinking in the morning sun, shaking off a heavy one, heavy like a loaded gun. Are the opening lines to which song by Elba? Grounds for divorce, starlings, or one day like this? Well, I'm trying to match the words to the title, and I think the most likely is one day like this. You've got it absolutely right, one day like this. Well done, Judith. Okay, Bob, promised you a miracle, Waterfront, and Alive and Kicking were UK top 20 hits in the 1980s by which band? Simple Minds, U2 or Depeche Mode? Yeah, I remember this back in the 80s. Um, it's not a song that you two or Depeche Mode would have sung. I think it was Simple Minds. Simple Minds is right. Well done. Judith, Armando Christian Perez is the real name of which rapper? <laughs> Drake, Pitbull or Flo Rida? I'm absolutely not the first clue. Um, Flo Rida. Flo Rida. Well, Flo Florida, anyhow. Florida, yeah. <laughs> not, not a Flo Rida fan. The answer is Pitbull. Mm -hmm. All right, Bob, you're ahead. Get this one right and you'll be in the final round. Here we go. 24 Carat Magic is a 2016 UK hit single by which singer? Justin Bieber, Bruno Mars or Ed Sheeran? I have no idea. That's typical, isn't it? 24 Carat Magic. Which is K-A-R-A-T. Uh, I'm just going to have to plump for Bruno Mars. It is Bruno Mars, well done. Yes, you got it, you got three in a row. And you, you've been, you've been, sorry, Judith, that's another sticky end on, on music. So, Bob, you've taken on an AKD of Emerge Triumph and a very, very good start for our challenges. Please return to us and we'll play on. So, good start for the egg bags. They have not lost any brains. The eggheads have lost, Judith. And the next subject for you is geography. Who would like this? Which egg bag? Geography, lads. Who's up for it? Can you know well. Kim, sorry, so I'm better. Better. Yeah, I'll go for that. Kim's going to have a bash at it. Okay, okay. Kim, our IT advisor and magician, against which egghead? Anyone but Judas. Um, I've got no idea, so go Steve, yeah. if you like. Yeah, I'll go Steve, please, Jerry. Kim from the egg bags, take it on Steve from the eggheads. Please go to the question room. Kim, as well as magic, you do IT. Yes, that's right, Jeremy. I'm an IT advisor. Which is magic for the modern age, I guess. Yes, yeah, very much Most so. of us have not got a clue how that works. Yes. All right, so we're on geography here. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I think I'd like to go second, please, Jeremy. Okay, Steve, are you ready? Got to be. Got to be. No alternative. The Eiger is a famous peak in which mountain range, Steve? Is it the Andes, Himalayas or Alps? That's the Alps, Jeremy. The Alps is correct. Over to you, Kim. What is the official currency of South Africa? The pound, the gilder, or the rand? So, uh, that would be uh, the rand. The rand is right. Steve, Wilson's Promontory, the southernmost point of the Australian mainland, lies in which state? Victoria, New South Wales, or Queensland? I'm not 100% with this, but I think it's Victoria. So that's my answer. Dave is nodding. Yeah, Victoria. Yep, Victoria is right. Okay, to catch up, Kim, your question. The Grand Ballon, or the Grand Ballon, is the highest mountain in which French range close to the German border. Is it the Massif Central, the Vosges Mountains, or the Pyrenees? So I think the Pyrenees is in that order. I'm going to go with the Pyrenees, please, Jeremy. The answer is the Vosges Mountains. All right, Steve has the advantage, and because you went first, Steve, you can end the round with this answer. The towns of Narvik and Hammerfest, both north of the Arctic Circle, are in which country? Sweden, Finland, or Norway? Hopefully that's Norway, Jeremy. Yes, it is Norway. How do you know that? Obviously, I've read it and I've remembered it. Not so many things. Sorry, Kim. No problem. Beaten by our egghead there. Always the danger of going second. Gives in the initiative slightly, so Steve is in the final round, Kim is knocked out, return to us, we'll play round three. Tight contest, it's even now, the egg bags have lost one brain from the final round, the egg kids have lost one as well, and we play on with history. Oh, Who's history? history? Mark, Mark, Mark you know, you know, for the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark's going to take on history. Okay, Mark at the end, magician and magic dealer. 
Who do you want to deal to? Dave, Beth or Kevin? Up to you, man. Yeah, okay. you pick. I'll go for Beth, please, you. So, Mark from the Egg Bags, Beth from the Eggheads, please go to the question room to face your history questions. Mark, you're a fascinating team. I must say, you used to teach dynamo magic tricks. Yes, we've run a, an academy for 10 to 16 year olds for the last 18 years. And dynamo is probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, yeah. Very cool. Okay, against Beth, you're on history, Mark. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, I think I'll go second, Jeremy, please. Beth, your first question. What name was given to the leaders of the Spanish soldiers and sailors who conquered large parts of the Americas in the 16th century? Were they Armada, Infante, or Conquistador? Uh, they were Conquistadors. Conquistador is right. Over to you, Mark. In World War II, what was FLAC? Early radar, anti-aircraft fire, or air raid siren? FLAC, F-L-A-K. F-L-A-K. I'll go anti-aircraft fire. Yeah, absolutely, as in it came under a lot of FLAC, yeah. yeah. It's gone into the language. Anti-aircraft fire is right. Beth, Queen Anne, who reigned from 1702 to 1714, was the niece of which other English monarch? Charles II, Henry VIII, or George I? Oh, this is where I've got to do my kings and queens. Um, I have horrible histories to thank for my knowing the order of kings and queens. Um, Anna Gloria, George, so, so she became before George. Um, that must be Charles II. Charles II is right. Well done. So, we go back to you, Mark. What was the first name of the mother of the women's rights campaigners Christabel and Sylvia Pankhurst? Clementine, Emily, or Albertina? I don't instinctively know this one, so um, I'm drawn towards Albertina. I don't really know why, but I'll, I'll go Albertina. It's the, actually, the, the Emmeline is the most famous one, and it's, it's her, Emmeline, Emmeline Pankhurst. Okay, Beth. Powered aircraft were first used in war in 1911 by which country against the Turks? Germany, Spain, or Italy? Powered aircraft. Now, I'm not sure whether Italy and Spain would have quite had the engineering powers. So I'll, I'll have to go with the percentage guess of Germany. Let's see, eggheads, do we know? It's Italy. Italy. Italy wanted colonial territory, and one of its targets was Libya, which at that time was loosely under the control of the Ottoman Empire, so they went to war with the Ottomans, and they, for the first time, planes were used to drop bombs, and they literally reach out of the cockpit and drop nice. bombs against some of the, the tribal uh, characters below. But it was, a, it was a brief war, but it was Italy against the Ottomans. Okay, Italy is the answer there. Oh, well. Oh. So, you have a chance here to come back, but you need to get this one right, Mark. Which Scottish king was assassinated by a group of conspirators led by Walter Stewart, Earl of Athol, in 1437? James I, John Balliol, or Robert the Bruce? Balliol I've never really heard of. I'm going with the, uh, the Scottish lead, so I'll go with Robert the Bruce. It's actually James the first. Mark, sorry. Beth is in the final round, and you've been knocked out. So come back to us, both of you. One more round to play before the final for £5,000. So the Eggheads fighting back against the Eggbags, who've now lost two brains from the final round. The Eggheads have just lost Judith. And one more round before the final. It's sport. Who would like this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll take that one. Please, Jeremy. Okay, going to be Darren. Which egghead? You can have either Kevin or Dave. Try Kevin. Go for it. Yeah, I'm going to try take on Kevin. All right, Darren from the egg bags taking on Kevin from the eggheads on sport. Let's see what happens here. Take your positions, please. Okay, so we're on sport. Darren, first or second? I'll go first, please. And good luck. Aside from the floor and any ceiling, how many walls does a squash court have? Four, five, or six? So it has a wall at the front, two side walls, and the back wall is glass. I'm gonna say four. Four is right, yeah. Back wall counts because you can bounce the ball off it. Kevin, who was named captain of the British and Irish Lions for the second time in 2017? Alan Wynne-Jones, Sam Warburton, or Paul O'Connell? 
That was Sam Warburton. Sam Warburton is right. One each. And we go back to you, Darren. Vancouver and which other Canadian city have hosted the Winter Olympic Games? Calgary, Toronto or Ottawa? Not 100% sure on this one. I think possibly there's a reference to this in Cool Runnings and it could be Calgary, so I'm going to say Calgary. Nicely done, Calgary is correct. Two out of two. Playing well. Kevin, the New Zealander Kane Williamson is a leading name in which sport? Football, athletics or cricket? Uh, well, I think that he has actually captained the, uh, the New Zealand cricket team. So, cricket. Cricket is correct. Kane Williamson. 2-2. Two, two. Very tight. Moving along briskly here. Darren, third question could be crucial. Which snooker player, a 150-1 to 1 outsider, beat Steve Davis in the final of the 1986 World Championship at the Crucible? Joe Johnson, Dennis Taylor or Stephen Hendry? Um, I believe this gentleman is from uh, pretty close to where we live. Um, and I think that the answer... I think Dennis Taylor was 1985. I think the answer for 86 was Joe Johnson. Yeah, that's very good quizzing because Dennis Taylor, that final was a very famous one, wasn't it? I remember sitting watching it at university, but that was the year before. Joe Johnson's the right answer. Well done, three out of three. Perfect so far. Kevin, to stay in, which American heavyweight world champion of the 1930s was known by the nickname Cinderella Man? Gene Tunney, James Braddock, or Jack Dempsey? And there was, I think there was a, I think that was the title of the film. There was a film made which starred, I believe, Russell Crowe as this man, um, known as Cinderella Man because his, his career had appeared to be over. And then he got a shot, a chance to get the title and he, he took it and, and briefly became world champion again. And it's James Braddock. Let me check with Beth, who not likes her boxing, is it? Is she right? Yeah, James Braddock. Yeah, James Braddock is the correct answer. So, three questions each we've had. The scores are level. We go to sudden death. And Darren, it gets a little bit harder now because I don't give you options. Don't give you alternatives. Here we go. The 1975 boxing match, known as the Thriller in Manila, took place in which country? Is that the Philippines? It is the Philippines. It's a funny old question. It's like saying, where is Manila? Yeah. <laughs> It's nothing to do with boxing, that question. The Philippines is the right answer. All right, Kevin. In 2001, the Romanian gymnast Nadia Comaneci became a citizen of which other country to which she had defected in 1989? Well, I believe she moved to the USA to, um, to work and coach and that, and, and she still is a commentator on gymnastics and various other things. So I think USA. USA is correct. Well done. Sudden death. Back to you, Darren. Who was the manager of Leicester City in their 2015-16 Premier League winning season? Uh, the tinker man, Claudio Ranieri. Claudio Ranieri is the right answer. So Claudio Ranieri is right. Kevin to stay in. Which Formula One driver won a record 91 Grand Prix? Uh, well, I think he's... Oh, hang on. No, I think he's still got Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher is correct. Sudden death, Darren, back to you. The England cricketer Stuart Broad began his first class career with which county team before moving to Nottinghamshire in 2008? I'm not sure on this one. I was hoping that you wouldn't have said Nottinghamshire because I knew he spent a lot of his career there. I'll just have to take a guess at Lancashire. Eggheads? Leicestershire. Leicestershire is the answer. All right, so a chance for Kevin here to take the round on sudden death. Kevin, in 2016, which American golfer became the first player in PGA Tour history to shoot a round of 58? I saw this at the time, but um, unfortunately, not seen it recently. Um, it's not necessarily one of the big names. Uh, was it? I'm just trying to think it's cup car. No. Read. No, I'm, I'm going to have to go for something that I, I, I think I may be distracted by this because I've seen his name recently, but I'm not. Um, I shall say Justin Thomas. No, it's Jim Furyk. I saw it was Furyk, was it? Yeah, the okay. Travelers Championship in oh, Connecticut. I, I thought it was somebody a bit younger. Okay. 58 rounds. Okay. Darren, you're still in it. Cool. You've got a magic there. <laughs> in which city did the British swimmer Anita Lonsborough win an Olympic gold medal? 
Now, I haven't won an Olympic gold medal until 2016 for quite a long time. Possibly in as far back as the 80s or 90s. I'm going to have a guess at Seoul. No, it was even before that, 1960 in oh. Rome. Rome in 1960. Okay, Kevin, you can take the round. Dick Butkus, born in December 1942, is a famous name in which sport? Uh, I, I hope I'm not snatching at this, but I believe that's American football. He's one of the NFL's most fearsome tacklers. American football is absolutely right, Kevin. Well done. Darren, you played well there. You, you kept him going on sudden death for, for longer than most, but you've been knocked out, I'm afraid. Come back to us, Kevin and Darren, and we will play the all-important final round. So this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads are not taking part in the round. So that is Darren, Kim and Mark from the Egg Bags, but also Judith from the Eggheads, would you please now leave our studio. Bob and Phil, here we are. You are playing to win the magic team of the Egg Bags, £5,000. Dave, Steve, Beth and Kevin, you're playing for something that money can't buy, the Eggheads' reputation, and to keep this role going. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge. You can confer. So, Egg Bags, the question is, can your two brains defeat these four? Sure, you can do it, Bob and Phil. Do you want to go first or second? We'll go first. Yeah, we'll go first, Jeremy, please. Okay, here's your question. Ban mi is a term for bread and a type of sandwich from which country? It's two words. The first one is B-A-N-H, and the second one is M-I. Is it Vietnam, Japan, or India? Vietnamese to me. I was thinking that as well. No, I was thinking yeah. Vietnamese as well. I think I'd go for Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah, let's for that. Yeah, I think we'll go for Vietnam. Vietnam is the right answer. Well done. Eggers, which actor born in 1987 has appeared in the films The Paperboy, Neighbours and Dirty Grandpa? Michael Cera, Zac Efron. Or Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. Zach Efron. Zach Efron's appeared in all those, hasn't he? Yeah. Is that about right for the yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it will be about that, won't it? We're going to go for Zach Efron, please. Zach Jeremy. Efron is the right answer. Back to challenges, one each. What was the first name of the Russian mystic and advisor Rasputin? Grigory, Ivan, or Alexei? Oh. I thought we were Ran Ran. <laughs> um, I don't know. You're drawn to it. I'm stuck. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 really not, I'm, I'm not getting anything from further. Uh, I'm drawn to Ivan for some reason. Really? I was thinking Grigory. Yeah. Ivan don't seem... It's not, it's not Russian enough. Alexei. Could be Alexei. Let's call Alexei. You think? No. <laughs> but I think I think that's not the least, the yeah. least obvious, but perhaps it is. Because it's the least obvious. I don't know. I can't think of anything apart from the song uh, no, that might mention it. Really I don't mention it at all, does it? I haven't. Which people? What do you reckon? <sighs> I don't think it is. I don't think it's I don't know. I don't think it's. You don't think Unless it's. Unless it's. Unless it's. Go for it. We're not really sure, uh, Jerry, but we're going to go for uh, Grigori. It's just a case we, we hardly ever hear his first name, do we? It's like oh. a glimmer. And I was going through the Bernie M song as well. <laughs> Are they right, Egghead? Yes. Yes, oh. yes you're oh. right. Oh. <laughs> Grigori, well done. Well done. You've got two. The Eggheads have got one. Final round, £5,000. Eggheads, a man named Willem Alexander became the king of which European country in 2013? Spain. Denmark or Netherlands? Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah. We're all happy with that. Yeah. yeah. We're going for the Netherlands, please, Jeremy. Yes, Netherlands is correct. Two, two. Now, if you get this one right, you could put some serious pressure on them. In the 18th century, the Royal Navy introduced a policy of sheathing the hulls of their ships with which metal? Steel, copper, or tin? Well, steel would rust. Well, but it would be the hardest thing, wouldn't it? before the time of stainless steel. Mm. Copper is often used in water to You see copper on on top of on top of boats, not even things. Yeah. Finicus, I don't know underneath. 
Tin's it, 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 a bit too expensive, isn't it? Tin's yeah. an expensive metal, isn't it? Well, copper is as well, isn't it? Not much. Tin's more expensive. Yeah. What do you got for copper, then? I think it's one hell of a gun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, again, we're not sure on this, Jenny, but I think we're going to go for copper. The correct answer is copper. Oh, hold on. Don't bother. If you've got three out of three, you, you might well find you've won. If the eggheads fall apart now, you've won £5,000. You don't need to do anything more. Well, 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 eggheads, here's your third question in the final round. What colour is the plumage of the chuff, a bird found in the west of the British Isles? White, brown or black? I thought it was black. Yeah, it's a member of Crow 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 Beth, you happy? Yeah. You happy? Yeah, I think black. Black, black yeah. On reflection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to go black, please, Jeremy. Black. Now, this is the kind of question that Judith loves, isn't it, Judith? The plumage of the chuff. I think it's an insignificant brown. It's very lucky you're not in the final round, because the answer is black. Oh. <laughs> That's a shame you knocked her out. <laughs> oh, dear. We needed Judith at the desk for that one. That would have been good. Derail the whole enterprise. Okay, so it's 3-3. Three, three. Sudden death now. Okay. I don't give you alternative answers. What is the name of the Act of Parliament that came into force in 1968 that prohibits sellers from using false or misleading information in order to sell goods or services? Well, you should know a bit about this, Phil. Running a magic shop. Yeah, we well, should. Yeah. I think it's the same not that. That's the only thing, that's the only thing I can yeah. say that goes out to me. Sounds right to me. I mean, it's been updated a few times, hasn't it? So it might yeah. have been updated. Yeah, well. That's all I've got. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you got anything yeah, I'm else? No, no. I think we're going to go with the Sale of Goods Act. The Sale of Goods Act was not 1968. Oh. It is the Trade Descriptions Act. Oh. It's not over, but if the eggheads get this right, it will be. Eggheads, which city is the largest by population in Morocco? Uh, Casablanca. I think, yeah, Casablanca. I think, yeah, I think Casablanca is so, the biggest by population. Yeah. 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 Right, okay. We're going to go for Casablanca, please, Jeremy. Casablanca is your answer. We're on sudden death, so if you've got this right, the contest is over. The largest city by population in Morocco. £5,000 is the jackpot today. The answer is Casablanca. We say congratulations, eggheads. You have won. Sorry for that, because you run a shop, so... Yeah. Just unlucky, yeah, never, never crosses my interest. I know, I know you know, I know you know. Yeah. Commiserations to the egg bags, and thank you for bringing your magic into the studio today. It'd be Welcome. great to meet you. Yeah, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. We have, yeah. The eggheads have done what comes naturally to them, most of the time, anyway. They still reign supreme. It does mean that the challengers don't go home with the £5,000. It rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, well done. You are in pretty storming form at the moment. You only lost one today. So join us next time to see if a new team of challengers can take them down. There'll be £6,000 to play for. Until we quiz again, goodbye.